The identity of Marilyn Monroe's biological father was not known until last year when DNA evidence uncovered who he was. And it's incredible that six decades after her death, such a mystery was still able to be uncovered, which makes one wonder what sort of technology and avenues for research will we have many decades from now. Marilyn Monroe was born Norma Jean Mortensen, 1926 in Los Angeles, California. And just like our previous subject, Judy Garland, she led a very difficult childhood and a very difficult life but yet she was able to, at least for some time, overcome the odds and establish herself as a famous actress and as a pop culture icon, her legacy lasts to this day. So Marilyn Monroe was a fantastic actress. Now two of my favorite films by hers include Some Like It Hot and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, which should be considered quintessential comedies. So make sure to check those out. And with that being said, Let's dive into today's episode of Ancestors Unveiled, where thanks to DNA evidence, we will be talking not only about the matrilineal side, but the patrilineal side of Marilyn Monroe, AKA Norma Jean Mortensen. Her 1926 birth certificate lists her parents as Gladys Monroe and Edward Mortensen. And if not for a strong lifelong suspicion that Edward was not Norma Jean's biological father, this episode may have gone a different way. Despite what some amateur genealogists had thought and different people speculated based on the birth certificate, even though Edward was still technically married to Gladys, at the time of Marilyn's birth, they had been separated. And so, as we're gonna find out in just a second, the biological father was a completely different man. But before we get started on that, I have a favor to ask, which is that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. It would be really, really helpful. You guys have been super, super helpful at bringing us to over a thousand subscribers, and now we're trying to get to 2,000. So make sure to do that, like, subscribe, and let's continue. A 2022 DNA test reveals that Marilyn Monroe's biological father was Charles Stanley Gifford, who worked for Consolidated Film Industries as a negative cutter. He had an affair with, but never married Gladys, who was his subordinate. Now, is there a better term to use than subordinate? Because, I mean, I know it's the term that most correctly describes their relationship, but somehow I feel like it's derogatory and slimy to say. But anyway, here's Charles's World War II draft card, which shows his place of work as well as his birth date and city. And starting from here, the Gifford line stretches back deep into New England genealogy. Charles was born 1898 in Newport, Rhode Island to Frederick Almy Gifford and Elizabeth Tennant. Frederick was born 1867 in Bedford, Massachusetts and remarried a woman named Ida shortly after the death of his first wife, Elizabeth. He worked as a carpenter, a trade taken on from his father, Charles Gifford, who may have in turn learned the occupation from his father, though in a rather unusual way. You see, Charles's father was John Gifford, born in the early 1800s and lived in Bristol County, Massachusetts. He worked as a mariner which AKA is a sailor. And without knowing too many details about his career, sailing does tend to be a very hands-on occupation. And it seems like carpentry could be a very logical next step for his sons to take. So this is a very speculative observation, but his father was a sailor. And the next two kids were carpenters. You know, oftentimes people took on the occupation of their parents. So, could be he had something to do with carpentry on the ship. That I couldn't really tell you. John's 1872 death certificate lets us get back another generation to his parents, Abner Gifford and Thankful Dunham. Now Abner and Thankful are very specific names, which I love in genealogy because it made locating them in records to be very easy. 
Their 1802 marriage certificate lets us know that Abner was from the town of Westport, Massachusetts, and that his father was named Christopher. And a document from 1790 catalogs the children of Christopher and his wife Deborah, including the exact birth date of Abner, October 16, 1780. Christopher Gifford was Marilyn Monroe's fourth great-grandfather along her patrilineal line. And you might think it's probably impossible to get back any further than that, but we may be able to due to some books which are online. Ancestry.com contains the entirety of a text called Clifford Genealogy 1628 to 1896, which catalogs the findings of Harry E. Gifford. In the foreword, he acknowledges that there may be incorrect or missing details, but implies that he was reasonably exhaustive with what he had to work with. And so taken somewhat with a grain of salt, here is the rest of the Gifford genealogy. I just want to take a moment to clarify that a lot of the birth dates, death dates, things like that are inconsistent from branch to branch. So take that for what you will. We're just taking a look at this book, um, not as proof that these are the ancestors, but given that somebody did exhaustive research on the family, I think it's worth taking a look at. Harry Gifford implies that Christopher was the third person in line to have that given name because Christopher's parents are listed as Christopher Gifford and Mary Borden. And his parents were Christopher Gifford and Deborah Perry. An entry in another genealogical book says that Christopher Sr. lived in Sandwich, Massachusetts, and that he and his brother inherited land in Dartmouth. They inherited it from their father, William Gifford, an early colonial settler from England, who had come to North America in the 1640s or earlier, and that he acquired huge tracts of land used as settlements for both his family and other settlers. This second book, which catalogs additional details of the Gifford family, says that William's father was Philip Gifford and that his grandfather was Edmund Gifford, spelled with an A-R-D instead of an O-R-D. And the website genie.com claims to take the Gifford family back another several hundred years, but given how shaky I feel about anyone past the 1730s in this line, it is not worth the time and effort to catalog this branch any further. I mean, it really would take forever, and there are so many unknown variables here, and also I'm sure you're dying to get into Marilyn Monroe's matrilineal side. So with that being said, let's cut this short with Christopher Gifford being the furthest back proven ancestor, and we'll continue on with Marilyn Monroe's mother. She was born Gladys Pearl Monroe in Piedras Negras, Mexico in 1902. Her parents did not have Mexican ancestry, but they briefly resided there when she was born. And thankfully, Wikipedia contains a lot of details of her early life, so there's not much need to expound on all the details since you can read it right there. Gladys had a troubled upbringing due to mental illness and a strained relationship on the part of her parents. And as we're going to see, this is a major trend for Marilyn Monroe's matrilineal side. Gladys ended up in several mental institutions and was provided financial assistance by her daughter. However, for a good portion of her life, they were unable to have a parent-child relationship and she floated from relationship to relationship, marriage to marriage, without ever being a stable presence in her family's life. Between Gladys and Charles Gifford, Marilyn Monroe had very few real parental figures in her life, which may have led to a lot of her childhood trauma and subsequent difficulties in dealing with life. Gladys's parents were Otis Elmer Monroe and Della May Hogan. Della was born in Brunswick, Missouri, and she appears to have led a tumultuous life herself. After the death of her first husband, she married two additional times. And like her daughter, she struggled with severe mental illness, ending up in the Norwalk State Hospital, a psychiatric institution in Los Angeles, where she died at the age of 51, with a contributory illness being listed on her certificate as manic depressive psychosis. The certificate also lists her parents as T.M. Hogan, and a woman with a surname of Nance. 
Further digging reveals a couple to have been Tilford, Hogan, and Virginia Nance. Many of Virginia's documents refer to her as C.V., and it has been implied that her full name was Charlotte Virginia, and she also sometimes went under the name Jenny. She remarried a guy named John Sellers, and she died in 1927. A probate record confirms that she was indeed Della May's mother, having died just four months after her daughter. Now, Virginia's death certificate lists her parents as Levi, Nance, and Sarah Jones. And while the document implies her parents were born in England, this is false. When we get to the Missouri censuses of 1860 and 1870, a different picture unfolds. Because the records are inconsistent about where Levi was born. However, they all confirm that Sarah was born in Missouri. And then the 1880 census tells us that her parents were born in Tennessee and Virginia, respectively. You might think it's impossible to trace somebody with a name as common as Sarah Jones back any further, but thanks to the little details that I was able to uncover in the documents, we actually were, and here's how. For starters, the only family that met all the criteria laid out in the 1850 census was a couple named Wilkinson and Mary Ann Jones. The husband was born in Tennessee, and the wife was born in Virginia. Furthermore, they had a daughter, Sarah C., born in Missouri. So this is in line with the 1880 census, which says that her parents were born in Tennessee and Virginia, and that her name was Sarah C. And this latter fact, her middle initial being C, is consistent across all censuses, 1850, 1860, 1870, and 1880. To prove this even further, in 1860, Wilkinson and Mary Ann had moved to Brunswick, Missouri, which is the town Della May Hogan was known to have been born in. Finally, an 1831 marriage document reveals Sarah's mother's name to have been Mary Ann Johnson. Now, some researchers online seem to imply that Mary Ann's parents were Samuel Johnson and Matilda Brockman. There is a Matilda Brockman who married both a man named Samuel Johnson and later a man named Thomas Cravens. The latter marriage certificate lists the Reverend as being Akila Jones, which happens to be the name of Wilkinson Jones's father. So while this is a very compelling and interesting theory, there's just not enough here to prove it, which is why for now we're going to be wrapping this up with Marilyn Monroe's third great-grandmother along her matrilineal line, who was Mary Ann Johnson, born around 1812 in Virginia. So there you go, the pop culture icon has patrilineal roots in colonial New England and matrilineal roots in Missouri and Virginia. So I hope this has been really helpful for you. If you have any additional comments to make or any other research that you have been able to find on this family, let me know in the comments section below. Once again, like, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll get you in the next one.